Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Hi, I'm Melinda, Pastor Moore's daughter. Welcome to our broadcast. Relax and enjoy our teaching. Welcome to the School of Miracles. We're opening our Bibles this morning to the Psalms 34. If you have a Bible, Psalms 34. We'll read a few verses out of this psalm. Verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Do you do that? <laughs> Most of the time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Delivered me from all of my fears. I put this verse into practice many, many years ago when I was afraid of the night, darkness. God set me free from that. It will, he will you too if you'll put it into practice. Amen. Just do what he says do and you'll get what he says you can get. Amen. Blessed be the Lord. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all of his troubles. That sounds like a good thing right there. Saved him from all of his troubles. Amen. The angel of the Lord encamps round those who fear him and delivers them. Yes. Amen. Here's my verse. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 13, verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Amen. Verse 17. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of what? All their what? All their troubles. All their troubles. What you going through today? Well, what are you doing there? God can deliver you out of all of your troubles and you can enjoy the life that God has for you. It's called abundant life. Amen. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I remember one time I was listening to a radio preacher traveling somewhere. And this was his theme. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But see, he never did give us the rest of the verse. <laughs> And I said, read it, man, read it, read it, read the rest of it. He never did finish that verse. So let me finish it for you this morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of what? Them all. Them all. Did you know your circumstances are really God's opportunity? Probably never seen them like that, but that's the way it is. God wants to prove himself strong on your behalf. Amen. The only way he can do that is to use your circumstances to come into your life and prove himself strong. I don't know how many years ago it was, but I remember I put this in my Bible. It's a prophetic word that Marcelo gave us many, many years ago. God said, don't look to the bigness of your need Look to the bigness of your God. Amen. Your circumstances are hindrances to seeing my abilities. If you keep your eyes on your circumstances, the devil will use your circumstances to defeat you and to accuse the word of God, the written and the living word. Your victory is in keeping your eyes on the bigness of your God and his abilities. Amen. He has promised to take you step by step by step, not only once, 
but step by step, and each step will be a miracle. If you've been around for a while, you've seen, you've seen some of this stuff happen in your own life. God is the God of your circumstances. Amen. He uses your circumstances as an opportunity to show himself strong on your behalf. We talk a lot about God's ability. We talk about the might of God. But if I ask you today to come and step right here and tell people what God has done for you this week, I wonder how many people could actually come up here and say, say something. Something God's done for you, not last year, this week. Come on up here then. What has God done for you this week? This week? This week. He has sent children, or not children, young adults to my house to roof my house. It was free. They had to, they completely re-roofed re my whole house in one day. And I know that was God because was I free? didn't have the money. It was free. Everything was free. Materials, What's her labor, name? and all. Yeah, dress them. But he sent them to me. He okay. had to because... Okay. Um, I'm working part time on my job. I couldn't get a loan to as a bank to have my house roof. And I just prayed that God send me the answer. Okay. He sent them. That's this week. And that's this week. Praise God. Tuesday. Well, we talk a lot about the glory of God. Let me ask you personally this morning: What do you think the glory of God is? When you think about the glory of God. What do you think it is? Presence. Presence of God. Anything else you want to say? The glory. When you think of the glory of the Lord, what comes to mind? I feel those wheels are turning. <laughs> Holiness, God's goodness. Hmm? His favor? Hmm? His presence then. Eh? Let me tell you this. This is the first thing I believe about the glory of God. I believe it's God's visitation to us. I don't know for some of you how long it's been since you've really had a visitation from God. We go to church. We sing the songs. We listen to the preachers on TV and radio. But you just think about it. how long has it been since you've actually had what I would call a visitation from God? When you knew, without a doubt, that you have had a visitation from God. Do you think you need one? I think all of us need one. I think all of us could use what I would call a fresh visitation from God. You see, God likes to keep things fresh in your life. He likes to keep things moving in your life. So first of all, it's a fresh visitation from God. Who doesn't want that for yourself and for your family? Amen. 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 Number two, it's the glory realm of eternity. There's something about the glory realm. There's something about that place that we call eternity. There's glory there. And when God lets some of that glory come to your life and my life in this earth, we call it the glory realm. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Then we call it the atmosphere of heaven. Atmosphere. That's it, right, ma'am? Yep. Atmosphere. And she's always hey, correcting me. You know, that's what it is when you've got educated folk in your family. Atmosphere of heaven invades your life. God's got to do something for the Christians in America. Many of them are falling by the wayside. Many of them are turning their back upon God. Things are just not working right in their life. And many of them are just forsaking the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? I remember when this place used to be wall to wall. Balconies filled. Chairs put out. Where are those people are now? Just check around and see where they are. I'm telling you, God's got to do something in his church. Yeah. He's got to do something for his people. Yeah. 
I call it a fresh visitation. Something has got to happen in your life and my life. Can you say amen? amen. Well, what does this glory bring to us? Well, it brings a fresh visitation. For one thing, it just refreshes us in our faith. It brings the manifested presence of God. People can talk about the presence of God. They can sing about the presence of God. But we're talking about the manifested presence of God. It's something you see. It's something you feel. Something you hear. It's something you know. God manifesting himself to you. It's a revelation of the goodness of God. i got to go back to Exodus 33. Any time I talk about the goodness of God, I want to show you where this goodness of God came from. Moses prayed a couple prayers in the book of Exodus. He's leading the children of Israel. He had to stop several times and remind God, these are not my folk now, they're yours. But in this leadership abilities that Moses had, some wanted to go on and some wanted to go back. And sometimes you don't know who's who till the crisis hits. The crisis has hit. And God says, okay, this is the way it is. Moses, I'm going to send my angel before you, but I'm not going to go up among you. If you do, I'm going to have to hurt some people. <laughs> he said, they're very stiff-necked. They're hard-headed. I don't want to have to deal with them the way I want to deal with them. But this is the how the show goes. And Moses starts talking to God now. And what happens in Exodus 33, God actually opens up the door and allows us to hear this conversation that he's having from heaven with a man on the earth whose name is Moses. Moses is tired. Moses is trying to figure out how he can get out of being the leader of these people. I might have been trying to figure it out for 50 years. <laughs> But God just keeps him going on and on. And, and he said, okay, i tell you what. If I have found favor in your sight, you know my name, you know all about me, show me your ways. And God did. But that's not all it was. He, he wasn't satisfied there. The second prayer he prayed was, Lord, show me your glory. Now, Apparently Moses was about like me. He didn't know a lot about the glory of God. See, I just know to follow him and to obey him. Amen. I don't know a lot about his glory. But I'm going to tell you something. The glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. Amen. So you need to get ready for it. The glory of God's coming. It's increasing in the church. It's increasing in the earth. Yeah. What is it? I don't know. We'll know when it shows up. <laughs> So he said, Lord, show me your glory. And this was probably one of the first houses of prayer that we've ever found in the scriptures. And it wasn't in the church. Moses had to go outside of the camp. He had to go outside of the religious community. And there was a place out there that Moses would go and talk to God. It was called the tent of meeting. <clears throat> Moses and God would meet together and talk, share with each other. Isn't that an awesome thing? Yeah. You think you can do that with God? Well, sure you can. You can talk to God. I was up last night from 12 to 1230 praying for a fella. I talked to him today. He said, well, dear God, I was in the bed then. The Lord should have told me that, bless God, and I wouldn't have been praying for him 30 minutes like that. <laughs> Give me that Shelby look. <laughs> so Moses has prayed two prayers. He said, Lord, show me your ways. And now he says, show me your glory. God's weighing these things out that he's hearing from his servant Moses. Let's pick it up here. Where are we? Let's pick it up in verse 18. 
This is the second prayer that Moses has prayed. Please show me your glory. And then he said, I will make, this is God talking back to Moses now, he said, I will make all of my goodness pass before you. He's not talking about the goodness of God, he's talking about the glory of God. But see, when God tunes in, he doesn't call it glory, he calls it his goodness. So we're already finding out here, the goodness of God is really the glory of God. Some of you have been enjoying the goodness of God for a long, long time. Amen. 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 Well, how do you do, let me just say this. Pray over your family. Pray for the goodness of God to be upon your family. Pray for God to keep you healthy. Pray for God to strengthen you. Straighten your thinking out. Pray for God to help you in your everyday walk. We're talking about the Almighty God. We're talking about a God who has the ability to help us and to turn things around in our lives. Think about what you're going through today. What are you going through right now? Maybe, maybe it's not having your house shingled. Might be. But God can take care of that too. Amen. And it won't cost you a dime. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, I could write a song about that. How long has it been since he shingled your house? <laughs> <laughs> the goodness of God. God is good. I want to say that again. God is good. Why don't you just say that? God is good. Tell the person beside of you. God is good. On the other side. God is good. If you listen to the devil, you won't think he's such a good God. But he really is good. God is good. Every good. And every perfect gift comes from above. His gifts are good too. But the goodness of God. Well, what's going on in your life? Is it good or is it bad? You don't have to go far to find out what it is. If it's good, it's from God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? So God says here, I will make all of my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. What's, what's, what's the verse that he's, what's he prayed? To see what? The glory. God hasn't mentioned the glory. He's talked about his goodness. He says here, you cannot see my face, for no man can see, my, see me and live. And the Lord said, Here's a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be, when my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you in my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, my face, you shall, shall not be seen. So, Moses is praying two prayers. Show me your ways. Show me your glory. We think about the glory of God. We don't think about something we can see or feel or hear, touch, experience. But when Moses got finished talking about seeing the glory, God talked to him about what? Goodness. The goodness. It's hard to hear a message about God's goodness today. It's all about sin. It's not about the goodness of God. If it weren't for the goodness of God, you wouldn't have to worry about sin or sinner. They would all be over. It's the goodness of God. And that's a part of the gospel, I think, that we forget so many times. We're always quick to judge people. We're always real quick to criticize people. 
But can I tell you, it's the goodness of God that's upon your life that blesses you and blesses your family. If you don't know how to pray, why don't you just pray for the goodness of God to be upon yourself and your family? The goodness of God. God's good. I said God is good. He always is good. Everything he has for us is good. So here's the goodness of God. It's the revelation of the goodness of God. You see, it's good for folks to know that. And the goodness of God is the work of God. So it has to come by revelation to us. This is something God has to reveal to us. I can preach to your head, but if your heart's not in it, you'll forget about it before you leave this place. So what are you talking about, Pat? I'm talking about the goodness of God. The goodness that comes from God himself is a revelation that comes to you. That has to be revealed to you. Then you'll know that you know that you know God is good. God is is good. Hallelujah. God is good. That means if he's good, he didn't put that cancer on you, did he? If he's good, he didn't put that attitude in you, did he? God's good. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, what does the glory bring to us? Well, it brings the goodness of God, a revelation of that. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, that's after 1 Corinthians, right? Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So we all, say we all. We all. With unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, or being transformed, or being changed into the same image from glory to glory, and as by the Spirit of the Lord. Say changed. Well, I don't know where I like that change. What? Well, listen, if God is good and he's changing you into his glory, then you're going to be good. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is a good God. Amen. But I see in these verses here, there's, there's an anointing for you when the glory begins to increase in your life. There's an anointing for you to see by the Spirit and the Spirit. There will be things that you will see in people and upon people and around people. There will be things that you will see by the Spirit because the glory of the Lord is increasing in your life. More and more every day you're becoming more and more and more like Jesus. God's working that image in you. Blessed be the Lord. Can you? I'm talking about the image that you were created with. The image of God. There's a little bit of God in every one of us. And the more of God that gets in you and gets working through you, the better you'll be able to see in the spirit. And what you'll find is there's some folks you just need to stay away from. You listen to me? You're going to see a lot of them. And God will give you something I call discernment. That's the ability to see. It's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You just think if God would have given you that 10, 20, 30 years ago, <laughs> you probably wouldn't be in the mess you're in now and you'd probably need more than one pastor to get you out of that mess. But when God gives you this gift, it's the ability to see. My wife had that years ago. She'd say, uh, Vernon said, watch that person. I said, what do you mean watch that person? She said, you need to watch that person. I said, well, I just don't see what you're seeing. She said, well, don't worry about seeing what I'm seeing. Just do what I'm saying do. <laughs> watch the person. I said, why should I watch them? You just need to watch them. 
So my wife has had this gift of seeing for a long, long time. She's full of the wisdom of God. If you don't believe it, just call her sometime and talk to her a minute. Ask her a couple of questions and see what she unloads on you. <laughs> you might not like it. <laughs> Everything she tells me is good, though, because it comes from God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I'm trying to learn how to say that like Jerry says that. God is a good God. If I could send you away from here today, that would be the words that I'd have in your spirit. God is a good God. Amen. And you'll see people going through things and they'll start telling you, oh, Lord, let me just tell you. you just, God's a good God. Mm -hmm. Okay. God is a good God. Amen. Then why do you fuss and raise so much hell around the house all the time if God's a good God? Hello, saints. Are you any saints in the house? <laughs> God is a good God. Everything he has for you is good. There's no evil. There's no badness that comes out of this relationship that you have with this living God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So you have a revelation of his goodness and the ability to see. I remember one time, the man prayed, Lord, Open his eyes that he might see. And when God opened his eyes, he saw the mountains and the hills fill with the chariots of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever asked God to open your eyes? Yes. Just put your hand over your eyes a minute. Would you do that, please? Lord, open these eyes so they might see. Open her eyes so they might see. Now give God praise just like you believe he's heard that prayer. The church, the body of Christ, needs to have the ability to discern, to see. You need to see the hearts of people. Are we okay with that? Amen. Well, it's almost 12. Let me say this. The glory of God will bring increased revelations in your life. Amen. You'll begin to see more and more of things from God. And you don't, might not realize it when it's happening to you, but it really will be a revelation for God, from God. God reveals things to you by His Spirit. Can you see, man? Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Well, let's do, a, yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let me do that just a moment, and I'll probably disconnect from you this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is one of my favorite chapters, Samuel. Look at that. You can tell that's a good chapter right there. That's all marked. That's a good chapter right there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've meditated this chapter, because there's a lot of wisdom in this chapter. We meditate the word of the Lord. Amen. And as we meditate this particular chapter, God begins to open your spirit up and begins to show you some things. I call it the gift of knowing. Amen. Somebody says, well, how do you know that? It's just, just know it. But I know, but how do you know it? It's a gift of knowing. It's a gift of knowing. There are things that you just know by the spirit. You can't tell other people why you know that. You can't even tell them how you know it but you just know it. Amen. Paul says in verse 1, I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. How do you know Him crucified? I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul said, however we speak wisdom, among those who are mature. 
Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. Careful who you listen to. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God has ordained before the ages for our glory. Do you want that wisdom? Amen. Amen. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, knew for had they known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Go after these. Go after these things. Go after the things that God has prepared for you. Amen. The things of God. Things, things, things. But God has revealed them. Reveal what? These things. What's he revealed? The things. God has revealed them to us through his spirit. See, we talk about seeing. We're talking about with your spiritual eyes. We talk about hearing. It's your spiritual ears. We talk about knowing. It's knowing of the spirit. Read on, please. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. The deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Amen. Now we have received, here we go now, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is us from, from God. Amen. This spirit knows all things. Yeah. Amen. I said he knows all things. Yeah. The spirit which is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things, you see the word things, it just keeps popping up in These things we also speak. Not in words which are man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, God have mercy on that fellow. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. Is that in your Bible? The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. Here's that seeing again. The word discern means to see. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? We have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. One more time. I have the mind of Christ. One more time. I have the mind of Christ. One more time. I have the mind of Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So this is what we call the gift of knowing. It's knowing something by the Spirit. I've seen people in the hospital and Barbara and I, I know they're going to die. We get out to the car and I say, well, babe, what did you see? But see, I saw something too. I saw by the Spirit an inward knowing, I call it intuition. It's one of my favorite gifts. Intuition. You just know something. Hallelujah. You just know something. You just know something. And you know, some people just not going to make it. There's nothing wrong with going to heaven. We all have those days. Can you say amen? amen. Some folk go to heaven. Some folks go somewhere else. But we, we're interested in going to heaven. Can you say amen? amen? So this gift of knowing, intuition, it's something that's knowing by the Spirit. And you'll find out if you hang around a place like this, you're going to find out some things that you're going to know, and you're going to know it by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Because this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to reveal those things to us that God has prepared for us at living. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you see him? I call it revelation knowledge. 
Revelation knowledge. Knowledge of things. Knowledge of things. I challenge you to meditate 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and just follow the thought there on those things that God has prepared for those that love it. I think I might have told you that in every book of the Revelation, there's something I read there, it will say, I saw. Yeah. I saw. I saw. I saw. I saw. <clears throat> Did you know this whole Bible is written by people who saw some things? And as you're around people more often, you'll see more quickly. What do you think about it? What do I think about it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm finished. How about you? Oh, I got another page if you want me to go on. <laughs> the word of the Lord says this. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. All flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Amen. Well, Lord, we don't know all about it, but we shall want to see it. Amen. Let it come to pass. I has not seen nor ear heard. Neither hath entered into the heart of a man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Amen. The things that God has prepared for us who love him. The spirit of the Lord will begin to reveal those things to you. Amen. And what that will do is set you apart. Amen. Amen. Set you apart from all the people that you know upon the earth. Because they're moving this one direction. And you're heading in this direction. Amen. God is revealing to you these things, but he's not necessarily revealing these things to those other people. Right. So you're a mile ahead of these other people, so I just challenge you, walk in the wisdom of the Lord. Amen. Talk about the wisdom of the Lord. Speak from the wisdom of the Lord. You are filled with the wisdom of God. Amen. You're filled with those things that God has prepared for folks that love him. All kind of things that go on in your spirit from day to day. All kind of things that are happening in your life and in my life. Let's hang on to those things. Let's go after those things. You want to study things? That's wonderful. Study the things of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Quit reading the mess. Get rid of the Shelby Daily Star. We stopped that thing from coming. To our house. That's the most ungodly thing I've ever read in my life. We just stopped it from coming to our house. Yeah. Saves you a little bit of money, too. <laughs> Are you together? Are we together? Yes. Quit. Can I tell you something else? Stop listening to the news. Amen. If you suffer from any kind of oppression or depression, for God's sakes, don't listen to the news. Even, even Fox News. Mm -hmm. You don't hear good news unless you come to the house of the Lord. <laughs> God is a good God. He's a great God. And he's in you and he's me. He's around us. He's just everywhere we go. Everything that God is doing is good. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. Can I tell you this world is going to hell in a handbasket. So don't try to change everything out there. If God can't change it, you can't. Leave it alone. I, might have, I, said, I said if God can't change it, you can't change it. Leave it alone. That's today's verse. Oh, that, that ought to be in the Bible. <laughs> if God can't change it, you can't change it, so why worry about it? You just enjoy your life that God has given you for some reason he loved you. He chose you to put all this good stuff inside of you. He loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. He wants to help you. He doesn't want to hurt you. He's a good God. So just let this goodness fill and know your life. This is what glory does when it comes to us. 
the more this glory increases in your life and in my life, the gooder you're going to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Whew, can I get a witness? Amen. Stand up with me, please. I'm not going to go to chapter 2. <laughs> the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. I don't know all that means, do you? The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. What little I do know about that is it gets better and better and better. The glory increases, it increases, it increases. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. So we are on the threshold of a first fresh visitation. It's called greater glory revolution. revolution. Greater glory revolution. Can you see amen? amen? So God is coming with great waves of glory to touch this world. Cindy Jacob said that the other day. I wrote it down. I said, mm, she must be listening to the same spirit that I am. God is a good God. Can you say amen? amen? I don't know what's going on in your life today, but a lot of it would turn around if you just begin to think about this character of God that I would call goodness. Amen. When Moses was having a bad day, nothing was going good for him. The people of Israel were tired of following his leadership because they didn't like where he was taking them to and what was going on. So he had that little chat with God. I'd like to encourage you to do that. I don't know what's going on in your life, but just have your little chat with God, not Jerry, God. And find out what's going on. Let God reveal some things to you. Can you see, amen? You might find out it's not half as bad as you think it is. Do you? A sister's about to go to the University of North Carolina. Can you believe that? Can you? Father, I pray for my sister. Give her great discernment. There'll be people she'll see that she don't need to know. She don't need to hang, hang around with them. And she don't need to spend time with them. So, Lord, I pray you not let her waste her time. Give her the wisdom of God. Give her this inner knowing so she will know and her knower what to do, who to do it with, and how to do it. Give her the wisdom, O oh Lord. You're such a good God. Let the manifestations of God's glory manifest itself in my sister's life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, our website. Our Lord is building his kingdom. Join us in helping our Lord harvesting souls for his kingdom. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Visit our website, www.christthekingshelby.org, and check us out on Facebook and YouTube.